This is about the third time we've tried to start this show tonight, and I finally think I got it started uh, correctly. I think. I think. I'm not sure, but I think. Okay? Anyway, uh, we're recording it, and and, uh, uh, what happened was, first time I ran it, we didn't have any sound. Okay? Second time I ran it, uh, I, I forgot to start recording the show. The second time I ran it, the third time I ran it, the, 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 one thing or another, we had to start the show four times tonight if you listen to it on the Internet. And you know something? I really don't give a shit. I just wanted to get a good, clean uh, video of this because it's a good show, and I got a lot of things to talk about, and we'll, we'll do that. Uh, but first, we got to go to a guest, and he's right here, right now. Ladies and gentlemen... If you are on uh, uh, Facebook Live, looking you right in the face is Will Durst. And if you're not on Facebook Live, not looking you in the face isn't Will Durst. I don't know. What's the answer to that question, huh? Yes. Yes, yes. Anyway, how are you, Will? Good to see you. It's all good. Alex Bennett, how are you doing? I'm, uh, I'm doing fine. I'm tr- or trying to do fine. You know, as well as you can, you can do as you get older and you get your aches and pains and crap like that. You know, every day there's something. Do you? I finally realized why people are grouchy, and it has to do with um, uh, uh, old people are grouchy. It has to do with everything hurts. You know, I got I got a torn meniscus and I got my uh, I got sciatica, so the feet are numb and you know all that. So when girlfriend says something to me i go yes what <laughs> you know i'm automatic it's an automatic grouchy thing that happens when you get older but when we were kids they were especially grouchy because they didn't have any medicines <laughs> you're, you're right you're absolutely correct yeah they were especially grouchy like, and and i always i always chalk that up to the fact that the kids were being annoying and that, you know, that's the very nature of children, is to be annoying to old people. But yeah. no. No, no. Although I do find young people annoying. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> well, that goes without saying. Yes. So all in all, your health is good? Uh, so far, so good. Yeah. Knock on for Micah. Yeah. Um, the hard part is keeping up with this guy. I'm doing a show. Wait a minute, you one say this guy, show. this guy, you were, that, that is, that's like Voldemort, it's the name that not be said? <laughs> he who must not be named, yes. Yeah. Do you notice I'm, nobody calls him President Trump, everybody just calls him Trump? Yeah, and I think that stems from Obama. We Yeah, we did call Barack the, Obama. Who's the last guy we called President? Did we? No, we just called him Reagan. I think, I think President Bush, we called President Bush. Uh, the first one. Yeah. Yeah. George Herbert Walker. Second one, I think we called President Bush a, a great majority of the time. But uh, because we didn't want to, you know, I, it, it it was just, I don't know. I I kept calling him President Bush. I don't know why. I refused well, to call Reagan this guy. Reagan was called Reagan. The, the thing is, people don't realize that President Trump is an oxymoron. <laughs> Yes, it is. It's like saying Pope Charlie Sheen. <laughs> you know, the latest has come out today, the big news today. You know, everybody's going crazy on it. Donald Trump and the Russian lawyer. Donald Trump Jr. J- Jr., excuse me, and, and the Russian lawyer. Yeah, yeah. Um, some... And, and I, I saw something in the paper the other day that Donald Trump Jr. is the Fredo of the Trump crime family. Uh, it, well, he... <laughs> Here's the thing. Uh, he is Donald Trump Jr., but he eventually will be Donald Trump, and I think sooner rather than later. <laughs> um, well, I'm doing a, a little one-man show. And you're always uh, doing a little one. You're always doing a Do you ever do a big one-man show? No, well, I always you, do a little one-man show. One-man show, by the way, let me tell you, ladies and gentlemen, uh, so that you will know this, the difference between a one-man show and a comedy act is about 30 minutes and $20. Yes, yes. yes. Well, no, because I'm only charging 20 so. oh, oh, I see. Uh, and also, I'm, but 
I do it for a number of reasons. Rick Reynolds said uh, the difference between a, a stand-up comedy set and a one-man show is one-man show is twice as long and half as funny. Yeah. <laughs> well, in a one-man show, you can also be a little more introspective about things. You, you don't have to be. You're not required to be funny every moment. Right, because people are listening to the words. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you prefer right. you would prefer that because basically you consider yourself, first of all, a writer, right? Right. I'm a writer who performs. A writer who performs. And your writing's very good, by the way, because I read them. I get all your stuff. If for some reason it comes in in my junk mail, I don't know why, and I can't get it to not come in the junk mail. So don't feel offended by my computer, please. No, that's because I don't have a a, 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 a send a mail program to send it out. No. So anyway, but uh, yeah, so I'm doing the little one man show, and I'm trying to do a lot of what I call verbal trills, yeah. where I I just do a lot of, um, you know, I'm gonna attack him the same way he attacked us with lies and insults and and bombast and bluster and bullying and thuggery and lies and insults and alternative facts and blatant truths and, and choosy falsehoods and deceptive invective and egregious deceit and lies. And, and I just keep going. <laughs> uh, verbal trills. And uh, so I'm constantly updating my little script. And... You know, some of the stuff that I have in the script, I wrote like a week and a half ago, and it and it's archaic. You know, talking about uh, when he was 11 weeks into his presidency, he said he had the best 13 weeks in the history of uh, the White House. <laughs> That's true. Remember when he said that uh, he claimed he had 3 million more, 3 million people voted illegally? That all seems so... You know, like it happened a hundred years ago now. Yeah, you have to keep up with this every day. I switch between MSNBC and the Giants, and shit happens between batters. <laughs> I'll tell you something. You know, I, I I told you, and you, you it was much to your chagrin that I had not since the election watched any right, newscast, right. Uh, any newscast on television. Okay, and I started now watching them again. And I re realize once more why I stopped watching them. Number one, they're addictive. They are addictive. I mean, now I find the first thing I'm turning on is thrown on MSNBC. And I will go to all the others. I will go to Fox to hear how they're spinning it. Wow. And then I will go over to CNN to see how they're spinning it. But I will start with MSNBC. And, and I used to turn on cartoons or something. You know, and that that was my life was much better for it than hearing these fucking pundits one after the other. It's like they can't do a whole hour without a pundit. You know, like and none of the hosts have any opinion. And they're so predictable because as soon as you find out who the guy is, you know exactly what's going to come out of his mouth. Right. Republican so-and-so, Democrat so-and-so, you know. The, the public is not interested in this. The only people that are interested in it is the media. Well, you can tell that guy is a Republican senator. Uh, we're, talk, is, we're, we're talking to so-and-so from Planned Parenthood. What do you think of the president's health care program? Exactly. <laughs> you, know? but the, you don't yeah. have to put them on. Just ask me what I think parent, Planned Parenthood thinks about it, and I'll probably be right. Yeah, no, but anyway, so I'm back watching the news, and I feel terrible for it. My life is not better for it. You're actually in my script because in my script I have uh, uh, the top symptoms of PTSD. Yeah. Post President Trump stress disorder. Yeah. And inability to sleep, flashbacks from simpler time, using words rhyme with Trump, make it queasy, refuse to watch the news too much like enabling him. Well, you know, you know. It, now, I don't know about you, okay? Because your your job is laughing at Donald Trump, okay? My question to you is: uh, is making fun of him giving him a certain amount of power? You know, um, because he, because it, it, it does it, like Mel Brooks said. The reason they said, "Why do you always like do things about Hitler? Why do you find Hitler so funny?" And he said, "It's my way of disempowering Hitler." 
Uh, but I don't know if this disempowers Trump. I just think it plays into whatever silly little game he's been playing. I mean, I and I make jokes about him, too, on my show, and I wonder if, number one, it isn't like shooting fish in a barrel, which it is, obviously. <laughs> Your cat even has an opinion about Trump, huh? I know, I know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. She's not happy. She's is not that happy. the same cat as before? No, it's a different cat. We had another cat. We, we, Very good. We first, we first started uh, this interview with him and a cat, and the cat was in. Inter- we had to start over again because the cat was interrupting the Wi-Fi. <laughs> That's true. You know, it used to be that a cat knew to sit on the television set where everybody <laughs> would see him. Now they're simply interrupting the Wi-Fi. It's warmer there. <laughs> it's warmer there. <laughs> but, but, you know, so, I mean, uh, the question is, do we really uh, – oh, this thing stopped recording uh, audio. Well, that's okay. Anyway, uh, so I just – you know, I, I, I just wonder I how much we I should joke him about him before before uh, we disempower him or how much we joke about him where he's kind of empowering himself. Yeah. Yeah, but that's all – that's all he does is focus on himself. The The whole world revolves around him, and now, <laughs> you know what? He's right. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so I, I think it's important uh, to laugh at him because I think when you can laugh, I think it puts a handle on something. Mm-hmm. You know, like an event it just seems overwhelming. It's like – like trying to carry around a beanbag chair, but when you put a handle on it, you know, you can sling it over your shoulder or you can drag it behind you. But I, I, I think, you know, you have to laugh. I mean, Lincoln, supposedly, this is an apocryphal story, but supposedly during the world, uh, Civil War, World War Zero, uh, Lincoln was in you know, some celebratory mood at the White House and he was telling a a humorous story and a lady said, well, I find that completely out of taste. And he turned to her and said, Madam, we laugh in order not to cry. And I don't know if that's true or if I just want to believe it's true, but uh, I think the fact is that that works. We laugh in order not to cry. And I've gotten people come up to me after doing my little uh, comedy and uh, making my little jokes, my little presentation, and they say, oh, my living God, thank you. I never thought I'd laugh again. So I think it's important. Yeah, well, it, it, and it, it, and it, yeah. the, real, the real comics on the road aren't doing it. Because you know, they, the late night guys well, are doing well, it. Well, because, you, as you said before, a lot of club owners don't want you doing Trump material. Right. Yeah. So well, it's it's not an outlet that everybody has. I had a very interesting weekend. I went out to Fire Island to stay with my friend Adrian and uh, her uh, her boyfriend Eddie. And you went they, to Fire Island in July. That yeah. is so stereotypical, man. That is so New York. <laughs> hey, give me a break! I never get out of this fucking apartment, okay? So I, they have a very nice house out there. And we we went out for a couple of days, and they had a guest come out. And he's uh, 86 years old. His name is Jack Garfine, and he was one of the. He started the uh, Actor Studio West, and he was part of the Actor Studio. Uh, and you know, when we're sitting there talking, he's saying, "And then I was telling Marilyn this, you know, and I was telling Jimmy Dean this, and <laughs> and, and, you, and you're going, my God, these were my heroes when I was growing up, you know. Okay. So, uh, uh, 86, huh? 86 years old, yeah. But anyway, the point was that he was 86 years old. And the, 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 he, it's like he has a little life in the theater, which is impressive. But he also had a life in, in uh, Czechoslovakia, where he was born, and became a concentration camp guy. Oh, wow. He was in 11 concentration camps. He was in Auschwitz. And was examined by Mengele. Oh, okay, I mean, he and he was in Bergen Belsen was the last one he was in. He was in, I think, it was in Dachau. He was in eleven of them. Okay, and um, I said to him, and this was the scary part. So when you look at politics in the United States, how do you feel about it? And he says it scares me because it's 
amazingly reminiscent. In other words, he's scared by it because it reminds him of what went on in Germany when he was there. And this is a concentration camp survivor. Okay, so I'll, I'll take his words to the bank. Because if he saw it all happening and remembers how it was all happening and now he's seeing it happen again, we've got to worry about that. Yeah. Yeah. It's not, this is not, uh, you know demonizing or or, or uh, going to the like uh, Bush Bush is acting like Hitler no 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 this guy is really acting like Hitler I mean with the lies and the the totality and the demanding voting records and saying he wants to set up a cyber security task force with Russia <laughs> supposedly supposedly and I mean it, it, I'm beginning to believe you could take this to the bank. You know, this is the kind of rumor that you hear and you go, well, okay, it was a rumor and, you know, people want to say things like this about him. But supposedly when he was doing the, the Miss America thing in Russia, they do have videos of him being peed on. You know, and that he's, he's, <coughs> he, he's be, he, they have stuff on him. And that's why he's going, oh, yeah, Russia maybe did this, but and I asked I asked uh, Putin about it. He said no, and I'll take his word for it. Yeah, I'm going to take his word for it. Yeah. Uh, did you buy the, any, any, any chance you see the Oliver Stone interviews with, uh, with Putin? I didn't. Oh, I didn't. And you said they were interesting. They're amazing, actually. Uh, I disagree with the press that he went easy on him because when he gets to the last interview, the one where Putin could walk out and it wouldn't mm-hmm. matter, he started pressing him on stuff, you know. But but uh, the thing that amazed me about Putin was, I wish our president were that smart. <laughs> really. Putin has a command of history. He knows intimately how our democracy here in America works, you know. He talks about the various levels, and hey, out in California you have these. And you're going... This man must be reading voraciously, which it turns out he does. Or he remembers shit. So, you know, I mean, give me a Putin without the criminality, and I would love to have him as president of the United States because he'd be smart. This president isn't even smart. No, he's, he's an oaf and a lout you and know, a clod. I don't know if I'd call him stupid, though. I think he's just uninformed. I think he doesn't care about being informed. I think anything that has facts and figures in it on paper makes him drowsy. <laughs> Learning makes you drowsy. Yeah. <laughs> so where does this all go? I mean, we're not going to see an impeachment, are we? You know, everybody wants to impeach him. Oh, we're, we're going to get to impeach him. Blah, blah. Nah, I don't think so. Well, they turned on Nixon uh, because uh, Nixon... I mean, it still was a Democratic Senate, Democratic House. I can't remember. But they turned on Nixon when Republicans lost one or two consecutive special elections. And that's when they saw the writing on the wall where he started becoming con- contagious. Yeah. And until that happens, or until after 2018, no Republican is going to cross the aisle. But if Democrats can take one of the two houses uh, and start you know, impaneling their own investigations rather than having to depend on Republicans to do it. Then, of course, you know, the chances ramp up and there might be evidence, but uh, no, I don't I don't think he's going to be impeached. I think the chances that he'll quit are larger than him being impeached. Yeah, I see that as a possibility. But, you know, what he's done is he's built a firewall against impeachment, against having to leave office, against being forced out of there, because that firewall is Pence, followed by the Speaker of the House, you know, followed by who's next in line? Another asshole. Senate pro tem. I think is fourth. President, vice president, Speaker of the House, Senate pro tem, which is uh, Mitch McConnell. Yeah, so, I mean, you know, why get him out of there? At least we can play him like a well-tuned violin, you know. Uh, these other guys are truly evil. Yeah. I mean, well, 
Paul Ryan isn't evil. Paul Ryan is just a, a little rich kid who uh, he was never popular, and he's trying to suck up to his rich buddies. Yeah. Uh, Pence is evil. Pat Oswald uh, <laughs> said that uh, what was going on was a prequel to The Handmaid's Tale, <laughs> and the the guy who could actually uh, kind of put that into action is Mike Pence because, you know, he's a religious guy. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, it, you know, the, he's built a firewall between himself and impeachment. I mean, do you, do you, well, who would you rather have, Trump or Pence? I know. I saw a button the other day that said, think ahead, impeach Pence. <laughs> <laughs> well, impeach Ryan, impeach McConnell. Do we yeah. ever get to a Democrat in this line of succession? Well, if the Democrats... When the Senate, how many people have? In other words, how many people have to die in the same plane crash together before we get a Democrat? Before we get the Kiefer Sutherland? Yeah. <laughs> I don't think it happens. <laughs> I don't think it happens with this administration. You know? Yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm. Uh, they, they don't go to the governor of California. <laughs> you know, he's not in the line of succession. Right. Right. It, it's. It's. Uh, it's. It's you know it's a real conundrum. I think you know we got to admit to ourselves we're going to have to live with this guy for the next uh, for the rest of whatever the term is. And the thing is, he's he's devaluing truth. He's devaluing the presidency. Well, definitely, yeah. You know. But he's devaluing truth, which is even scarier because that's a a permanent scar. Yeah. I mean, he he lies. Just to keep in practice, he lies. Uh, remember when they said none of his people ever had any connections with Russia? And that includes Don Jr., that includes Manafort, that includes everybody. No, Nobody met with any right. And now every day another revelation and nobody's calling them on the fact that they lied. They lied under oath. They lied to the press. They lied to the American people. They lied. Nobody says but you said you didn't have any. Well, blah, 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 blah. yeah, and they and they have nothing to say. But he didn't realize it when he tweeted. That made it part of the record. You know, so you can go back yeah. to those tweets where he says, "Ah, oh, my son had nothing to do with it." And now we find out his son has even released emails today showing that he was involved yeah. in talking with this Russian lawyer. Now, I admit Russian lawyers might be really good, and you want one, but. Uh, you know, this wasn't exactly. <laughs> this one apparently, was attractive. But this was all about information that they had regarding Hillary. You know, they and that. and that it shows that the Russian government, at least, or the higher ups, wanted Trump to win. So now this, you know, when they, when they say, but this was all about Russian adoption, but why can't the American people come back and say, but you you said you didn't have any meetings with these people. Were you, were you telling the truth then? No, you were lying then. So why should I believe that you're not lying now? You know, do the, do the uh, Jack McCoy thing in Law and Order. Well, they're, they're you know, they lie. You know, it, again, uh, it's the Goebbels' big lie. It's that if you say it enough, people will believe it. Okay? Well, I think it's if you say it enough, the people who believe in Trump will believe it. Yeah. Uh, because they will they will deny any notion that Trump is crooked or that Trump did this or Trump What's did that. What is it going to take? Huh? What is it going to take? Yeah, well, how bad has it got to get before you go, yeah. hey, the guys are crooks? You know? Uh, and the answer is it's going to take a long time. It's going to take a long time because those so, people will just – those those people were stupid enough to vote for him in the first place. Yeah. Yeah. To get rid of the corruption in Washington by hiring a New York City real estate developer. Yeah. I mean, already. Yeah. It's like what they said about Huey Long. The only way to get rid of him is to find him in bed with a live boy or a dead girl. Yeah. Well, the, I'll tell you something else. Uh, when you mention Huey Long, nobody knows who we're talking about anymore. But go back and see all the King's men. Anyway. Uh, the first. Uh, yeah. But it, it, it it's, you know, it's it's amazing to me how, how forgiving some of these people. Republic, you know these these people who voted for him are about him. Oh, they they voted for him on the notion that we always had like let's get somebody in as president who isn't a politician. Well, that's like asking a guy to fix your pipes who isn't a plumber. 
You know, you want a pro in there. Sometimes, yeah. Yeah. Let's meet your new gastroenterologist. Yeah. She's a former Oakland Raiderette. <laughs> right. She's going to be doing she's going to be doing your colonoscopy. <laughs> so, I mean, I mean, how how bad is it? Are we are we just because we're lefties, are we, we are we, we just know. paranoid? We don't know how bad it is. Yeah. We have no idea. Wow. And the cat has an opinion, too. Now, which one is that? Which one is that? This is Eloise. Eloise? Oh, yeah. Okay. And He's the and, noisy one. Madeline doesn't make much Wait a minute. Sense. Eloise? And it's a guy? No, no. Oh, no. It's a, oh, it's a girl. It's a girl. But hold up just a little bit more so I can see it. We're going to, uh, we're going to, be, we're going to be cat sitting. Oh, really? Where? Here in the apartment. Only we're going to have to put screens up on the window so the cat doesn't commit eighth, eighth uh, story high k- kitty suicide. Yeah, yeah. You know. Uh, but we're putting in, we had some screens, so we're going to put some screens in the windows. And uh, yeah. yeah, Jack Garfine's uh, girlfriend uh, uh, has a cat. And they're going to Germany because he's doing a documentary uh, uh, in Germany. And they were desperate for somebody to take care of the cat. So we, over the weekend, just met them for the first time and said, we'll take care of your cat. Because <laughs> I haven't had a cat in this house for years, and I love cats. Uh, you know? Uh, you love cats, too, obviously. You don't have a... I didn't hear a dog barking. No, no, we don't have... We had a dog, and the dog lived for 10, 12 years. He was a park doggy that Debbie rescued, and... Yeah. Then we always had cats, and now it'd be too traumatic to bring a dog into the household. And so, yeah, that's where we are. You know what I've noticed? We've run out of time. Oh no! Already? Already? But you know, we've we I think sufficiently depressed people about our future. So <laughs> we, I think we've done our duty, and we can move on for this this time. But I hope you will join us again in a couple of weeks. Yes, I hope to see you in a couple of weeks. In the meantime, enjoy your feline, uh, uh, your feelings, getting them back. You'll you, yeah. you really have a good time. Yeah, yeah, and f- smelling cat shit. That, that, that's also, a, you know. I know what kind of food they like, though, because there's <laughs> nothing more depressing than opening a can of food, putting it in their bowl, and watching them sniff it and walk away. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, are you playing anywhere in the next week that people might be able to see you? Come see my little one man show. I'm in uh yeah, in San Francisco at the Marsh, the Marsh dot org or WillDurst.com. dot com. The show is called Durst Case Scenario. I'm gonna be doing it every Tuesday in uh, San Francisco at this theater and taking it on the road on yeah. weekends. A little bit of PR advice. Call it your big one man show. <laughs> My little one man show. It's just my PR opinion. Thanks, That's Will. I appreciate it. Bye, bye buddy. Eloise says bye too. This is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network. Talk like you've never heard it before. And hello, welcome back. I'm Alex Bennett. Thanks to Will. I love doing Will because he allows me to uh, do the video. We, we he has a Skype, and we uh, and you can see him instead of just hear him like we do with some of the people here. A few other people have uh, have it as well. By the way, hello to Randy Thomas. How are you, Randy? Randy and I used to work together here in San Francisco, San Francisco, in New York City at WPLJ, and uh, she uh, she waved at us on the uh, on the commentary part of the uh, of the uh, 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 Facebook page. So hi, hi, Randy. Hi, how are you? Good to see you. Love to talk to you sometime. She is uh, she is not only a very nice person, and not only a very talented person, but she also, you've heard her. She, she well, many years has been the voice on the Oscars and on the Emmys and on all these other award shows, and you've heard her on commercials. And uh, so uh, just a hello to an old pro friend of ours, and uh, hope everything is going just fine with you. Uh, let me see here. i got a whole bunch of things to talk about my weekend, but uh, we'll do that. But first, we've got to go to our citizens panel. Now, in case you're not aware of what the citizen panel is, it's not just one caller. It's not just two callers. It's not just three callers. It can be upwards. I don't know. We've done as many as 13, including myself. And um, so um, here we go to the uh, citizens panel. We've opened up the lines, and now we're just going to wait for people to start calling. Okay? 
And uh, you can do that by uh, uh, using Skype. And if you don't have Skype, go get it. It's at skype.com, uh, S-K-Y-P-E.com. Download it. You install it. It's very simple to do. Then they ask for your first name and your last name, your email address, and an ID you want. Our ID here, our uh, call-in, sign, call, whatever you want to call it, is uh, GabNet Live. And then you can just uh, talk to us using Skype. Uh, in fact, I'll show you. Here comes uh, here comes Mike. Mike always calls. Mike's always a a. Uh, where are you, Mike? Uh, we have all we have is a warring picture. Of I'm you. right. Oh, there, well, there's your picture. There we go. There's Mike. Oh boy, Mike. Why is it? Can I ask you a question? Why is it you yes. call me even when I'm just turning on my Skype to test it? When you know I'm not on the air. Yesterday I was I was using Skype to make sure I had all my pictures and stuff lined up for the screen. I had to do some, you know, fixing of stuff. And and you're calling me. I didn't know. I'm sorry, Alex. Huh? I didn't know. Hey, I got a question for you. Did you see what Trump's going to do? Well, he's going to he's going to tax. Yeah. The bourbon going out. Yeah. Are the United States got taxed? Then on top of that, yeah. <clears throat> okay. He's got tax also on the people who make it in Ma Kentucky. Wait, wait say that. Who, who, wait a minute. Who's he going to tax again? The people who makes the bourbon in, in Kentucky and in Tennessee. Uh huh. And then he's going to tax the people who make the, the bourbon. Liquor, li the liquor going out of the, uh, the country. Or oh, leaving the country. Yeah. Well, wait a minute. What's bad about that? I mean, it is you know, it's what? not it's not like we're getting bourbon from another country and bringing it here. It's like people are being making you know have jobs making it and all of that, and it becomes an industry uh, that's that international. Why why all of a sudden is that terrible? I have no idea. Why why do they have to tax the people who make it? Why do they have to tax the people that make it? I have no idea. Yeah, I, 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 I don't understand what Trump's doing. Well, I should say well, none the of, dictator. None of us understand what Trump is doing. Uh, he's a dictator. He's, he's a dictator and all kinds of other taters. Uh, and also he needs a little uniform, grow a beard, put a little cap on, grow, you know, be like, uh, yeah. uh, like Castro. Okay, uh, Mark's calling. Here we got Mark uh, Thorner is Thor calling. Boy, everybody's... Uh, Everybody's joining in tonight. Hold on a second. I got to do some uh, fixing of my uh, uh, panel screen here to try and, and get the. Uh, uh, I, I have to I have to adjust this because I uh, I over the weekend was doing other stuff with it and I gotta make it. Uh, there we go. I think that's about it. Hold on a second. I just got to do a little more here to. I'm, 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 I, so I can get everybody in the in the, in the frame. There we go. All righty, we're we're in business now. Let me see if I can transition over to that. There, you see how much everybody's in the picture. Well, we lost Tony. Where did Tony go? I have no idea. Hello, Mark. You know, your wife posted first where you were, but she <laughs> had a typo because it said you were in Florida. So I looked up where and it's like you're across from Alligator Alley where I live. That's like an hour from me. Then I realized, oh no, you're in Fire Island. What? What? So she, what, what wait a minute. She posted. She, got, she posted. We were in Florida. The typo where she posted. Yeah. Her, yeah, it, it's on her. You know, it looked like F L. Yeah. Oh, I see. Um, yeah, and I and I looked up like. <laughs> You guys are literally right across from me. I mean, it's an hour drive. I can be there in the morning with egg, with bagels. Oh, don't and green you think eating. if I was coming down there, I'd let you know? That's what I figured. And then I looked at your page. Oh, you're out in Fire Island, you know? Yeah, I was out in Fire Island, <laughs> and, and I'm, I'm I'm sorry we had, I don't hear from uh, Phil tonight. Uh, I don't know where he is. He's not even uh, he's not even online. Uh, because I have some something I want to talk. Oh, he's here. He is. He's coming on. Oh, I have something I want to talk to him about. But uh, anyway, how are you doing, Rob? What? Did, how was your weekend? Very good. Very nice. It, it was was very good. Yeah, we took a ride to the Shenandoah Valley, uh, out to Shenandoah National Park. Uh huh. Very nice, beautiful uh, park. Wonderful. It's a, it was a gorgeous day. Took the convertible. It was a, 
It's a three and a half hour drive through scenic, you know, about thirty six hundred feet up in the air. Yeah. Around the mountains. Beautiful, really. Wow. We may go there this weekend and spend the night. Really? Uh, camp out or are there places to stay? No, they have lodges with yeah. fireplaces and really nice. Yeah. Well, I yeah. spent my weekend in Florida, as you know. <laughs> <laughs> you were in uh, Seaview. I recognized the beach. Yes. You were probably within a block or so. In fact, I believe I saw behind you well, the ha- one of the houses that you were standing in front of is the house to Tony Randall had rented on the beach yeah tony randall i asked uh, and tony randall was out there and uh, in fact my friends were renting the house she now owns okay at that time and remembers tony randall walking down the street and seeing him in, at, the, at the market and places oh yeah like he, would, he was very accessible that's how i met him oh, wow. well i had a really interesting weekend uh, I thought it was going to be, I, you know, I'm out here, Fire Island, Sun, all of that, you know. But uh, the, uh, my friend Adrian and her boyfriend Eddie invited his acting teacher to really? be, oh, yeah, to boy. come out. Yeah. And uh, I had heard this guy had some kind of history, but I didn't realize what the history was. His name is Jack Garfine. Oh. And Jack, what do you mean? Whoa, you don't know who Jack Garfine is, do you, Tony? No, I just got excited because I think it's going to be a good story. Oh, I see. <laughs> Please. I was by by the way, we, do, we have Rob Alfano here. We have Tony. We have, uh, uh, of course, uh, Patrick has joined us. Hello, Patrick. Um, and we have uh, Mike and we have Mark and we have uh, Phil. Okay. Howdy. So anyway, um, uh, Jack Garfine was one of the people who started, he started, he actually was in charge of starting the Actors Studio West, but was one of the members of the Actors Studio with Lee Strasberg and all these people. And uh, he also directed a couple of films uh, back in the day, one of which starred his wife at the time, who was Carol Baker. Uh, And... uh, he he just had all these very interesting stories to tell about the days of the actor's studio, you know, and he say, and then, uh, you know, Jimmy would come over and blah, blah, blah. And I mean, Jimmy who? Oh, oh, Jimmy Dean. Oh, you mean the guy with the sausages? No, the actor, James Dean. Okay. And then, uh, you know, I was riding the car one day with Marilyn, you know, he's throwing all this stuff out and and he's talking about writers like Samuel Beckett, that was his, who was his best friend and um, Tennessee Williams and uh, 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 Arthur Miller, all these people that he knew, all these people that he directed, uh, he actually gave uh, James Dean his first part in a play. Uh, and the guy was, just had amazing stories to tell about those days. And when I was growing up, I wanted to be an actor, and these people were my heroes. You know, so to hear about them intimately over the weekend was amazing. But the most amazing part of it is, is Jack, before he came to the United States, was in 11 concentration camps. Oh, wow. He, uh, he, he, he had traveled. They'd taken him from concentration camp to concentration camp. The last one was Bergen-Belsen. Uh, but, you know, he tells me about all these people he's known, all these people he's met. And then when he tells me that he was at Auschwitz, and the doctor who looked him over and inspected him was Mengele. Wow. Wow. I went, wow. And then he told me some stories. One of the stories he told that was just a, 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 a amazing was he said, I hate humanity. I said, why do you hate humanity? And he said, I hate humanity because look what humanity did to me. He says, but I like human beings. Because as individuals, they're capable of heroic acts and of doing good things. And then he told me about this one Nazi soldier. He was a, he was a, um, uh, a, uh, what do you call it, an officer in the German army, who when they were on a death march from, I think, one camp to another or something like that, uh, he was, he couldn't walk. I mean, he was just, he was just almost passing out. At the end of the war, he was only 42 pounds when they liberated him. Um, and the officer picked him up and held him in his arm 
and carried him for miles and miles. And at one point, some Germans on a motorcycle were coming up behind them. And they knew that if they saw that he was not in good shape, they'd just take out their guns and kill him. And this guy just said, stand up and pretend like you're fine. And he walked, okay, as best he could until the motorcycles passed. And then the guard, the officer, again, put his arm around him and carried him the rest of the way. He said, that's why I hate the human race, but I love human beings. You know? And he said, if it weren't for human beings, individuals who, and there were quite a few Nazis he mentioned, not Nazi officers who took a chance to save his life. He talked about one officer that was asked to give him 25 lashes on, the, on his back or whatever. And when the other officer left, he went one, five, 15, 25. Okay, you're through. He said, if he'd gone all 25 because of how thin I was, I, w I, would, I would have been dead. So these were wonderful stories. Now, Phil, I have something I want to tell you that he said. Yeah. I asked him, what do you think about what's happening in America right now? And he said, it reminds me of Germany. He says, it reminds me of the regime that came to pass and the attitude and the mentality of the people in Germany. And uh, it scares me. It should. Uh, yeah. Hi, one man's hi, opinion. Brian. You say one man's opinion. He's a fucking concentration camp survivor. He went through the worst kind of thing you could go through in that situation. Lived it. He lived it. And he came and he said to me, what's going on today, what was going on in Germany at the time that he went to the concentration camps. He said it was the pre prequel to when I went to the concentration camps. Well, there's certainly a lot of anti-Semitism today. It has nothing to do with anti-Semitism. It has to do with being anti-human. Yeah. Uh, that's a catchphrase for all Republicans. You try to dehumanize them uh, rather than understand them. I, I hate Republicans, but I like individual Republicans. How's that? Not good enough. Uh, not good enough, I see. Yeah, but I mean, uh, what would you say to him, Phil? Uh, you know, I would think that he has a very interesting story. Uh, I know my friend's dad uh, was also a, uh, a survivor of the camps, and his mother, who's now passed away, uh, he, my friend's dad was interviewed uh, on the, uh, the this project. Uh, what's his name? It starts with an the S. Show a uh, project. Project. The show a uh, project. Yeah. Uh, uh, well, he was interviewed for that twice, and I have the CD of the interview. I want to make a copy of it and send it to you. And uh, very, very interesting. Uh, you know what he was through and what happened, uh, but the people were taken. They didn't even know what was happening when they were being rounded up. Uh, you know, uh, my friend's father was basically a kid. He was a teenager. And uh, this kid, was, he, kid, Jack was a teenager when this happened to him. He was 13. Yeah. And, uh, same thing with my friend Michael's father. And, uh, you know, they, they were in Poland. And, uh, you know, they, they were just, uh, you know, uh, thinking that, you know, all shall pass. They had they had no idea. And uh, so, what what's had you know if he if well, he, he says was, he, well, he, he was a, he was a, he was what, he was rounded up in Czechoslovakia, Jack. All right. Yeah. Well, you know, if they say that this is a that uh, being a Republican or being uh, or the attitude of what's going on in America today is reminiscent to him of what went on in Germany or in Czechoslovakia or in Poland, uh, they didn't even know what was happening. And uh, well, no, but and, Phil, you're trying you're trying to dismiss the fact that a Holocaust survivor this weekend said to me that what's going on now in America reminds him of what went on in those days in Germany. Uh, there aren't a lot of people left who have, who can, who can have those memories, yes. and maybe they should be listened to. Yes, well, that's true. Uh -huh. Rather than it's, it's 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 interesting that uh, my friend's dad's a Republican and a survivor of the Holocaust. Uh, so I'll I'll make a copy of it. Uh, it's a very I, a very you, interesting you, interview. You, you don't have to give it to me. I had a very interesting interview this weekend, and yeah. I'm very happy that I had that interview. You know, 
And uh, you know, it it it. Uh, but I but I I you know I, I I'm surprised that you aren't even going to think about what he had to say. Oh, I thought about oh, what he had to say. Uh, it's one uh, man's opinion. And it's, it's, I, it's, I respect it's one, his opinion. One man's opinion. It's an expert opinion. Uh, it's somebody that lived through it, and I respect I respect his opinion. Uh, although I don't believe that Trump is an anti-Semite, I don't believe that Trump is trying to do anything to. No, we're not hurt saying people. that he's going to do it this time to the Jews, but he's going to do it to other people. That the, uh, the how, mentality, how you... the mentality of what's going on in the country right now is strangely reminiscent to him of what was going on in his part of the world at that you time. You know, Democrats would have been uh, very much in favor of. <laughs> Uh, getting together you're with you're changing the subject. Or, you're changing the subject, hey, Bill. No, you're the, moving the it to another simple. area altogether. The, the subject is very simple. You're you're making a comparison to something that the premise is not true. Uh, now, what happened in Germany happened in Germany. What happened in Czechoslovakia happened in Czechoslovakia. But what's happening in the United States has nothing to do with Nazism. And you're attributing uh, you're attributing that to a uh, to a uh, to a leadership. That uh, has has no no bearing on that kind of uh, uh, that kind of thing. What he's doing, he's trying to do for the betterment of the of the country, not to you don't tear think it down. Hitler. You don't think Hitler was trying to do things for the betterment of the country? Well, he had a thing. You don't think that he? Solution. You don't wait. You don't think that he? You don't think that his followers believed that he was doing what was the best for the country? Yeah, they probably did. All right. Well, that's that's all. You know. Well, uh, you know, it, it, it'd be different if Trump was out there putting people into concentration camps and trying to kill them. What he's just doing, in power less than six months. Right. What he's trying to do is he's trying to protect uh, the United States citizens from a group of people that have that want to kill us, that want to end our way of life. He's not trying to take over the world. He's not trying to march into Paris. He's he's only trying to protect us. Protecting ourselves from monsters that we as a country, or at least as far as the CIA and other intelligence agencies, are themselves guilty of creating in the first place. Well, Brian, that's a very astute uh, opinion because those people have been around for a long time through many, many uh, administrations, and it's Trump finally dealing with them. Can I say something? Yes. See, I think Trump feels you said that he's protecting us. Can Trump just be using the whole 9-11 fear monger we didn't get attacked i'm not saying obama was a great president but under the last eight years of obama we never got attacked and he did get been laid is trump just using the fear tactic from 9 11 to say i'm protecting everybody while he passes his laws that he wants into place which is really his tax laws and his phony health care thing and he's gonna kick he's almost playing like i'm i'm gonna protect you but i'm doing this over here it's misdirection. We didn't get attacked. We were safe under Obama. I, where was this illusion that we were attacked in eight years? Did I miss an attack on our soil? Y yes, you did. They were happening every other day. This well, is, it never existed. <laughs> Queens. They're happening in Queens right now. Well, but we, no, but you're, absolutely, no, you're, absolutely, right. you're absolutely right. It's though. almost like he's just pulling a con act with that, with that uh, slogan. Well, this whole idea he's of I'm, I'm going to protect you, well, he's not going to be able to protect us any more than Obama did because Obama, there was nothing ever happened under Obama. There were no That's attacks right. on this exactly. country. Obama is, never uh, kept his... Uh, his his promises. We drew the line in the sand in Syria. He did nothing. Well, uh, wait a minute. Shut up a second, Phil. I, you you always derail the question that I ask. That you, was the question. No, you know, uh, no, that wasn't the question. I have to question. disagree with you, Alex, on one thing. What? The thing I have to disagree with you on is that it's not that nothing happened. Plenty has happened as far as terroristic attacks on our country is concerned, but there were domestic terrorist attacks. Our enemy, by and large, isn't one who wears a isn't one who wears a, 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 a hijab or whatever 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 they yeah, wear. I know. <laughs> wears a wears a wears a ball cap and waves the Confederate flag and drives a pickup truck. Those, uh, you you make a very good point about that. Bundies. But what I'm what I was saying to Phil was that under Obama, there wasn't a terrorist attack on this country. There was a terrorist attack on this country under Bush, because he wasn't paying attention, but apparently there was something that Obama was doing for eight years that prevented it. And, and uh, uh, the, the shame is that a guy like, uh, like Trump comes along and makes a big deal out of this whole thing, like he's gonna protect America, but it's already protected. 
there was a uh, soldier over you the didn't weekend the in question. Hawaii. You didn't, see, now you Not just, oh, then there was a soldier in the weekend, the last weekend, blah, 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 and you take us off into a ditch in the road. And, and no, because what he did was he said he pledged to ISIS, and that's why he did the act that he did. Uh, uh, that has nothing to do with what we're talking about. Yeah, because what's no, happening is, is you're, minute, you're me, saying it's domestic Let me terrorism. ask the people around here. Uh, uh, right. Jeff, does that have anything to do with what we were talking about? Huh? Oh, it's, you don't have your mic on. Oh, sorry. Oh, oh, I, th I think there you are. Yeah. How's that? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah. It, it, I, I, I think we have to stay on the term, on the plan. And the plan here is that I don't think Obama knows uh, He's done a tremendous amount of things, but our present president doesn't seem to have a clear direction about where he's going. I get a lot of bullshit stories from him about he did more than, and you'll get better than you got it, and it'll be faster and cheaper, and you know. But it's it's all stories that are not yeah. more than a, well. I mean, uh, it, it, a it, three set. Isn't he trying to cause a fear among the populace, uh, you know, uh, for to his own advantage? Because to say that this country isn't safe is wrong. It has been safe all along for the last eight how, years. Considering how wide open this country is, right? Yeah. To think about how many people that live here and how wide open this country is, it's pretty damn safe. I mean, if you think about it, 9-11 uh, uh, happened at the beginning of George Bush's term. So that by the time you got to Obama, there was plenty of time for them to start trying to game the system, okay? And and for some reason or another, we never had a, a terrorist attack in this country under Obama. I mean, if you really think about 9-11 still, Alex, I still can't believe that day they got those planes. I don't think I, 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 I would have. I always had this uh, this feeling that, yeah. that in that cave, wherever he was, bin Laden looked at this whole thing and he said, Fuck, it worked. I think you're right. I, think oh, you I guarantee it. Huh? I think he had to be shot. I mean, I don't think it, it, you know, they figured, oh, they'll, they'll fly the planes, they'll miss the buildings, but at least they'll crash into New York. That'll cause some trouble. Uh, and then they hit those buildings, and on top of that, both of them come down. You would think they'd be able to shoot the planes down there, the Army. Mark, well, Mark, well, well they, didn't, they didn't, they, they them didn't see them coming. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, wait, 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 Mark? Look, I was down in the Trade Center in 93 when they first tried. Yes. And at that point, I just knew that's it. It's open It's open territory now, and they're going to try it again. Unfortunately, I was right. And I always said, why aren't we beefing up the security? What the hell's going on here? You know, they beefed up oil security for maybe one year. And then it was like, well, you know, business as usual. Yeah, because it becomes, becomes a, it becomes a who's going to pay for it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> oh, it was always in the back of my mind, they're going to try this shit again. If you think this is a one-time incident, you're wrong. Right. And, you know, yeah, the fact that both towers fell, Alex, that, that was... But, you know... <laughs> uh, to this day, I'm still like... Fucking bastards. And, you know, and I've always said this, you know, and I don't think Bush was doing that good a job as president up in that one point. Here it is, pal. This is your FDR speech. Make it good. And we got bullshit. Right. right. And that that's what bothered me more. I, I was furious. I wanted I wanted an out and out attack, you know, and it, it, it's like we got a jargon. We got Congress singing America, the, whatever. I, I'm, that's not what I wanted. Right. You know, you know I, I wanted all-out war against someone in the middle, and they knew who exactly was <laughs> going You know, it was enough. Uh, you know, after seeing the towers fall, I, I was like, that's it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I don't think that we've had the, the proper vengeance after all this time. And the thing that worries me now is that it's not even so much what's going on. It's what's happening here. Rise in anti-Semitism. Rise in violence. And our president's not doing anything about it, it seems. He's letting well, it happen. And whether he's involved with it or not, and he somehow he somehow sparks well, 
Can yeah. I say something too to Phil and even Alex too? Mm-hmm. How come Trump can't give a speech where he brings people together? It's not his. It's always like I hate Hillary. I did this like Marxist. It's he never like could say this to the country. Yeah, he he's really up, it, Everybody it, split apart. It, it, Let me give a loving speech. It's like he has no heart. Well, it's it was divisive it, before he took office. His device of now, and he's going to be divisive until the day he dies, which hopefully I will be soon. I think he's really. I really do. Thank you. Yeah, I agree. Uh, I have love for the guy, and that this was Carnival years, Parker. Or, what hearing stories for people that work for him, and it was like, and the way he did business in New York, right? right. Uh, he was no, he made enemies left and right, and he didn't care, right? right. Alex, you said it yourself. He was tutored by Roy Cohn. He bet you he's a spitting manager of this guy. Well, I mean, taller brains. What, what did you say, it, Phil? I said he's Trump is taller. Trump is taller. He just doesn't seem like a nice guy. Oh. You know, also, know. also, he knows people hate him. He can't even act a speech. To well, it's hard to believe that with the life, with the life that he's led, Silver Spoon getting million dollars to start his life out, having everything he could want, and still be that miserable of a person. You're right. He probably is a miserable. You know, it, it just, it just hit me. The only person that was probably more amazed uh, and and uh, gobsmacked yeah. than uh, Osama bin Laden that those two towers came down. Probably Donald Trump that he won the election. <laughs> <laughs> but I felt good out. He probably did. He probably did though. Well, we like we learned uh, in the news today, right? We learned that they they had help from the Russians. The Russians yeah. were supporting them. They have an email now that says, "Here is information that can help you." It's part of the support that Russia has for Donald Trump. Yep. We know this now. Yep. True. You can't say it's fake. What did you yeah, say? What, what because you... they said they uh, they got the meeting under the guise that they had information, but it turns out that they didn't provide any information, and that they so got that the we know of yeah. But, yeah, oh, wait, a exactly. the, yeah. wait a minute. The fact that you had the intent isn't yeah. that bad enough. Uh, Donald Trump Jr. is not a part of the administration. Oh, uh, what? And he's I'm sure Donald knew what was going on. He, he wasn't. He was he, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Do, nobody was part of the administration at that point, Phil. But was he a part of the campaign? Yes. He supported. Well, and he was an advisor. Bingo. Bingo. Because uh, up <laughs> to that time, a, not he even. Did he as an advisor to, uh, uh, like Bush did when. Um, uh, he had received certain information, and he went to the FBI with it. I don't know that he had a duty to do that. Hey, Phil Kushner was there. Yeah, yeah. Kushner. And Manafort, yeah, that's and true. Manafort, they were all there. But, oh, yeah, but I mean, to say, to say, well, Kushner none of them were part of the administration. Of course not. There was no administration at that point. Yes, right. that's true. Yeah. So we're what? Trying to generate one. Like, what is their duty? I want to. I want to hear from Patrick. He's been quiet tonight. Yeah, Patrick. Good. I don't have anything to really contribute. Really? Number one, number one is uh, whether or not it's becoming uh, Boy, this, third round. This, I don't buy it. Um, what's going on with this sound? I don't know. That's It's you for some reason. You're having some... I think. Huh? Is everybody else hearing okay? I'm hearing yeah, echoes. Yeah, There's Please. some slapback. I don't hear any slapback here, which, of course, doesn't matter. No. I hear slapback from, from uh, Patrick, however. Right. But yeah. do you hear slapback from me? Mute and unmute oh, your microphone. Not. Maybe that'll work. I don't know. Yeah, uh, yeah mute your phone, mic and then unmute it. That That's one way of trying. Patrick. See what happens. All right. No, still a little. Why? Do this. Hang up and call right back, okay? All right, good. Uh, then then we'll have a, uh, maybe have a we better We still have a full back. house right now. Huh? We have a full house with Patrick. N- uh, no, we don't. We have, uh-huh. nine. We have nine. Three, four. Um, we have yeah, nine. we had ten with Patrick. Okay, Patrick signing back in. I can see that he's signing back in. Uh, but um, let me see here. Uh, all right. Okay, Patrick, can you hear us? I can hear you. Now you're fine. Oh, you sound better. Now you don't have a slap back. Anyway, okay. what, what were you saying now? You were saying that you... you, you... I had a whole game with a third Reich, or the fourth Reich, whatever you want to call it. Um, 
I see marks of uh, idiocy. I don't see him as a dictator. Um, I see parts of his administration that they want to convert in this direction. Um, like Steve Bannon scares the hell out of me more than anybody. Yeah. You know, and, and as far as are we safer or less safe? I kind of agree with Mark, what yeah. he had to say with in 93, uh, they were going to attack the towers again. Mm -hmm. I think we're going to get attacked again anyway, regardless if it's under Trump mm -hmm. or another president. I don't think it matters. Yeah. I think we're rife for another attack. And I think uh, Dash is showing that in Europe. And in spite of what is being said, that they've been defeated now in Iraq and Syria, um, I think we're going to have the same shit, little pockets here and there. And I mm -hmm. think the United States is, is right for good attack. Mm -hmm. And I think it'll be on multiple fronts. I don't think it'll be New York in particular. I think we're looking at multiple major cities. Yeah. Okay, you, you seem to have a little bit of problem there, but we, we, I think we got most of what you had to say. Uh, Jack? Yes, sir. Turn on your camera, will you? Oh, okay, I'm sorry. I'm sitting here asleep at the switch. Besides, I... Well, I, I was asleep at the switch. I, I had to start the show three times tonight because I couldn't get anything right. Well, I'm glad I'm warming up with you then. <laughs> no, I, I guess I, I was away for the weekend... And then I'll tell you about it later. We'll talk more about it. I'm, I'm not leaving live stream because they suddenly decided to take my advice. Mm. And they're offering, they're, off, they're offering their, their $800 studio program for producing oh. a program for free. Well, all I want to say and, is... And, 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 and it, it automatically will hook up to uh, Facebook Live. Wow. So until, but I still have to f configure it. And I think part of the configuration today threw some configuration off of what I'm doing here. And so I had that problem that I had to start the show over again, but then I forgot to start the video recording for it later. So finally, by the, mm -hmm. I think the third try or fourth try, I got the show on the air. But uh, anyway. And you're the one who's supposed to be knowledgeable about this stuff while I am the digital uh, equivalent well, I, of, of, of Cheetah. Yeah, but, well, uh, well, no, but the point is, the point is that what I, what, what happened, I think, was this is what happens when I get some sun on me, you know. Well, all I want is, well, well, first of all, I want to say this. It makes thanks, sense. Pal, thanks, pal, for taking a day off. Now my wife wants me to do that. It's, <laughs> oh. Well, you got Mondays off for crying out loud. That's your day she, off. She wants to go somewhere. Oh, really? Yes. Well, you, but you see, you got a situation where you can still keep doing the show. Just Amy does it, you know. Well, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> hey, but I heard you guys talking about this. Yeah. And uh, like you, Alex. Oh, yeah. Uh, that was probably my stepson coming home drunk again. Uh, <laughs> like you, a few months ago. I had a conversation with a man that I know that is 93 years old, one of the three concentration camp survivors that I have known in my life. Really? He is the only one that is still alive. And I asked him here a few months ago, your take on what's going on in this country. And, and uh, he was in Poland as a Jew was 14 years old when he went into the death camp with 24 or five members of his family. He was the only one to walk out at the end of uh, at the end of the war. Well, this guy that I was talking about, Jack uh, Jack Garfine, uh, mm -hmm. when he was let out, did not have a family any longer. Well, this is what happened. Yeah. Uh, uh, with my friend Jack Aran, he walked out with no family and no testicles. Jesus oh. Christ. Oh. Manglia medical experiment. Well, uh, uh, this guy Jack met Mangala at Auschwitz. 
He oh. was examined by, by Mengele. Imagine that. <laughs> Who's your doctor? Mengele. You know, I mean, it's, it's just... That's uh, single-payer health care. Yeah, single-payer health care. Oh, I, I mean, uh, <laughs> it was... A, he, he, he actually, he said that he... Uh, they were processing some mm -hmm. of them to see who could be good workers. Mm -hmm. And uh, he was told to say he was 16 when he was actually 13. Mm. And so Mengele had him come up and looked at him. And he said, oh, you're a beautiful boy. And he stroked his cheek. Mm -hmm. And and he said, how old are you? And he said, 16. And he stro stroked his cheek again. He says, okay, go over there and stand with those people. Okay. Mm -hmm. And sent him over to the people who were going to be made into workers. Mm -hmm. right. uh, and when he was over there, he talked to one of the capos, uh, the Jews who were watching the other Jews. And he said, you know, I kind of lied to him because I'm really 13. Maybe I should go back and tell him. And he said, do not do that. Mm -hmm. And he mm -hmm. said, that saved his life. That was one of the things that saved his life. Yeah, my but the, friend's father. But, but for uh, all the people uh, that he said he, he knew, for all the people that he said he, he met in his lifetime, and he's mentioning, you know, Brando and James Dean and uh, mm -hmm. Marilyn Monroe, because he all worked and, with, worked and directed them at the actor's studio. Um, I said, the mo pr thing that impresses me most is that you actually met Mengele. You know? Mm. I mean, that that's... Well, the That's guy great. that I knew, yeah, uh, 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 or rather, the guy, yeah. Actually, I, Phil had his hand up. So, uh, did you record the conversation? No. Like an interview? No. No. But uh, at some point, hopefully, maybe we'll have him here, uh, or hopefully, I will be able to do one. I did not want. I had my camera with me. There were some things I photographed him doing. But mostly I didn't want to have the camera running when I was hearing all these wonderful stories because it's intruding on somebody and, you know, without really, you know. So I, uh, uh, you know, I'm, I've gotten to know him and, uh, you know, maybe we'll have him on the program or I will do an interview. I would love to sit down and do like 20 hours of interviews with this guy and debrief him on his whole life, you know, do his own life in the passing lane because it's just, it, the, the, just the history, his is phenomenal yes jack well the guy that i'm talking about i did interview him when i had a tv show here in the in the dallas market yeah he wrote a book about his experience of surviving the camp and also yeah of, ex of surviving after the war because uh he was at burke and belson which wound up well that's, on, that's where uh, jack, the, jack that was the last camp that jack was in jack was in 11 of them shitty huh Amazing. Yeah. Anyway, bottom line was uh, he wound up on the Russian side and surviving that and finally getting to the United States in 1949, 1950. Yeah. And so Much I asked him. Worse than the Germans in many cases. Yes. And so I asked him, what do you see this country going through? And this was back in maybe february mm -hmm. i asked him that any because uh, he just died here uh, 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 uh a few weeks ago yeah and he said it scares the hell out of me because it reminds me of what was going on well, in you europe didn't hear the beginning of my show i was talking I about about jack and that he said to me exactly the same thing mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and phil of course is trying to excuse it oh well that's his opinion <laughs> you know yeah, that's his opinion. He was in a concentration camp. Well, Alex, it's kind of like, uh, uh, oddly enough, uh, my mom's younger brother was with Patton in Europe. There was a black tank unit, and he was in one of the details that went into one of the camps, and I've forgotten which one, and he was like 20 years old, 21 years old, and he said he never saw an, as much inhumanity to human beings as he saw them. And I got to thinking years after he said that to me, here's a kid that grew up in the South in the 30s, black, and he said he had not seen that much inhumanity. Now, I, uh, I, I loop all that in. It's very easy for Phil or for me or for anybody to say that's one man's opinion. But we keep 
we better keep an eye on what goes on in our country. Because as long as we don't realize the fact that we're only two or three clicks away from fascism at any given time, we're in danger. Exactly. We have, a, we have a different enemy right now. That enemy is coming from within. There, ISIS is recruiting. Yeah, it's called the uh, Trump administration. American, uh, ISIS is recruiting young uh, disenfranchised people, whether they be Muslim or or Americans, that become uh, uh, radicalized. Ever hear, ever, ever hear of the bun? Ever yeah, the bun? Uh, that's uh, Alex's uh, uh, sec, no, third, the second, word, the uh, third word, wife's uh, no, 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 uh, no, father. No, wrong, was. Phil. He's not referring to that bun. Oh. <laughs> the, the, the word bun simply means bond, and so any organization that was German, <laughs> called itself a Bund. But here in America, the term Bund was used to describe Nazis working covertly in America. Right, Jack? That's what you're talking That's about? That's right. Yeah. Okay, then I hadn't heard of that. But oh. the, there is no organized group in this in this country. There are little cells of people that seem to uh, uh, communicate on the Internet. You really, you really know this for sure, Phil. You're, uh, yeah. you, you, you know, this, what, they tell this at, uh, at your cop lessons or something or what? Well, yes. The, what happens is uh, these uh, this is where the current attacks that we've had, these uh, small, uh, uh, these yeah, small we've attacks. we've got sects and cells of radical Christian elements here operating. Yeah, we, we have that too. Well, I mean, we have, I, I, would, I would worry about the right just as much as I worry about the left. After all, it was the right that did Oklahoma City. Uh, all these extremists have to be worried about. The right that did the Olympic, with. the Olympic bombing. Yeah, yeah. And and that, Eric Rudolph. If yeah, Eric he's Rudolph. really dealing with that, how come he is not talking about radical Christian terrorists? Uh, huh? That's huh? interesting. Huh? Uh, Bob, your court. Well, well I, I don't know that uh, that he's not. You know, uh, hey, have you but heard? But to be say fair. That? In deference to fairness and to Phil and his side, there's also you've also got radical left wing elements like your Ted Kaczynski's, your Unabombers. Sure, sure, sure. And sure. this uh, this new group, this Afada or something that seems to uh, be attacking police and others. I'll give you an old group that we know is organized. KKK. Exactly. And Phil, after me, you're number two on the list. <laughs> uh, that's true. <laughs> Number three. If we got any Catholics on the panel tonight, you're number three. Oh, yeah. Well, I'm a, I'm, I'm a, I'm a, ref I'm not a Catholic anymore. Yeah, okay. Yeah, that's still okay. Still okay. So you're, 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 you're safe. David. You can hide the David. rest of us out. David. Yes. Uh, wait a minute. Patrick. Patrick is, has his hand up. Patrick. What? Uh, you are you're number three. Okay. okay. So well, listen. When you, when we, are oh, they all come for us? Can we come stay at your place? And hide yeah. out. <laughs> My place? No, they no not your first. place. Well, you're you wait a minute. Yeah, no, you're black. You're going with the rest of us. Hey, hey, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Me, the black guy, from here, the white woman living in the south. I got a neon light on my house. Nobody, nobody is uh, devoid of 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 this. You know, we're all neon light should be. Can you imagine going for a walk in the with that wood floor? I'd laugh. You know, it, it, no, you know, everybody has a stake in this game, whether they're first, second, or third, and uh, maybe. Uh, Trump is looking out for our best interests. Well, I thank him for that. Oh, I really, I really, I, I, and, and, and the minute I start believing that, I'm going to cut my own throat. <laughs> if any of these politicians were looking something. out for our best interests, they'd be trying to figure out a way to extricate ourselves from the Middle East. They are. How? How? Uh, yeah. Well, I'll Trump build. doesn't want to uh, get involved in uh, in a Syrian war. He's brokered a ceasefire yeah, with, uh, with Russia. Of course, he's brokered everything with Russia, Phil. He went to he went. I asked Trump. Uh, I mean, I asked Putin, did he fix the election? He said, no, that's good enough for me. Yeah, Wordle. you know why it's good enough for him? Because they got not, because no, wait a minute, wait a minute. Because they got those P pictures is the reason it's good enough for him. <sighs> You know, he and, and the pictures was was a false story that was trumped up by some uh, uh, hired gun 
by the DNC. I hear that it wasn't because when you go to Russia, they have more spy cameras in Russia than just about anywhere in the world. And when he came to town for the Miss Universe pageant, he was being videotaped at all times, and they do have tapes about him getting peed on. And did they Trump release them? On? No, they haven't, but they. this okay. is the way they're keeping him in line. It's probably the same thing as the CNN wrestling tape. Who peed you know, on? It's all bullshit. I got to see that. That would be so good. We can do a paper CNN wrestling tape was for real. It was just a thing they put on the guy's face for the, that particular situation. But he was at the uh, at the WWF, as it was called in those days. Uh, yeah. Uh, uh, wrestling. Yeah. Well, that, that's a real thing. What is all that noise? I got criminals in my neighborhood. Is that in your neighborhood? Yeah, it's like crazy cars going by. I'll mute myself. Boy. I'm sorry. I, I thought, thought it was a B-29 flying over. Yeah. Oh, it's not a like cluster here. Either that or, Sunday, or, or... Sunday, or, Sunday. Or, oh, either, Tony's Raceway. Either, either that or Brian's <laughs> cat farting. Or he didn't have his ass to the uh, screen. Yeah. As, as a, he was given his... We found out it's a boy. This is the second cat I've had on opinion. today because oh. when I was doing Durst, his cat was getting... In fact, we had to start the Durst interview twice because at one point the cat was interfering with the Wi-Fi. So, How so? It was so just... Good. He was in front of it or something. He knew exactly where to be to block the signal. He wanted oh. attention. Yeah. Yes, uh, Jack. But look, if, if Trump wants to do something to extricate us from the Middle East, you know what you do? You say, hey, we're going home now. Well, there's a way to leave. What do you and mean there's a way to And leave? that's what Obama did to us. What do you mean there's he a way to left, leave? He left a vacuum. Why is it the vacuum that created business? ISIS? Why is it our <laughs> damn business? He's training you. Because we're there. Because, uh, because and Bush made it our business. And, yeah. and the quickest way for us to make it not our business is to say, not our business. Well, he You know, there's, uh, an old, there's an old song out of the 40s that says, mind your own business and leave my business alone. So uh, it looks like you're an isolationist, too. I'm an isol... Well, I'm kind of a strange isolationist. And yeah. that uh, I want to sell you whatever you need. You mean like Trump did with the Saudis? Well, we've well the thing is we've always sold things to the Saudis. Yeah. You know, and uh, uh, yeah, sold them eight packs in the nineties, and now uh, we're selling them a lot more stuff. Well, look, you know, somebody once asked Jesse Jackson in the eighties what the problem was with American import exports. And he said, America is a great exporting country. It's just that what we export the most of happens to be weapons. And the fact is, there are more people that want to buy a Toyota than want to buy an F-16. Oh, shit. One F-16. Yeah, well, I, yeah. I prefer to, you know, we, all, we should leave this whole topic of Trump since it's just a never-ending you know, circle that we no, keep going around in. You have one opinion and I have another one. So it's just, you know, and, 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 and our opinion is right and yours is wrong. Oh, uh, and it well said. Well, yeah, yeah. I mean, I just, I, I, we, I hate to disabuse you of your, of your feeling that what you're saying makes sense, but it doesn't. It does to a half of the population that voted. No, no it does to 40%, 37% of the population. Uh, you know, that's, you know, what they say, uh, you know, eat shit because... Again, yeah, again, you had your, you, again you had your statistics <laughs> oh, wrong. <laughs> you had your statistics wrong. I'm going to tell well, you, I'm going to tell you, what, what, I, I want to change the subject here. Uh, I want to change the subject to how maddening our services we get in america these days you know uh, 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 did services I services in what sense did i strike a chord in some of you here's uh. what here's what happened to me let me just give you this example and we can take it from there uh i had to come back a day early from fire island a day earlier than we were going to because I had this part that was being fixed by GoPro for my 
you know, karma grip thing that's like a, a you know, a, a, what do you call it? A, 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 it balances the camera so that it, it's smooth and operates smoothly. Mm -hmm. And the stabilizer went bad, so I had to send it down to them, and then they were shipping it back to me. And I wanted to be here when FedEx was going to deliver it because I knew that if I wasn't here, and they bring it back the next day, and the next day I had something to do, and the day after that and I had something to do, and I just wanted to make sure I got it, okay? So I came back a day early. We sit here, and I get this thing, you know, from FedEx. It's on the delivery truck. This was put on the delivery truck on Saturday and will be delivered the next business day. All right. I sit here all day. I've even got the baby monitor on so I can hear the buzzer in the kitchen. Everything. I'm sitting around all day. Finally, it's eight o'clock at night. No delivery. And all of a sudden it says delivery exception. So I call them to find out what happened. Oh, well, uh, look, what happened was uh, uh, the, we didn't get it on the truck in time and the truck took off. I said, but online it says it was on the truck Saturday. And they said, well, uh, we just, it wasn't on the truck, so it'll be, de be delivered tomorrow. I said, well, can you deliver it to a different address? So I'm going to give, give, give the person uh, uh, Marjorie's office. $50. No, no, it wasn't $50. They said, sure, we'll be happy to. And I, he, I gave them all the information. Today, I get another thing saying, we tried to make the delivery, but we couldn't. Uh -huh. At well, your home. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. Well, I went downstairs and there wasn't one of those FedEx things that they like to hang on our front door. Yeah, right. There was nothing like that. I didn't see anything of the sort. And it was supposed to be delivered to another dress anyway. So now they say we'll make another attempt tomorrow. So I call them and the woman at FedEx says, well, there's nothing down here that says another address. The person, did they give you a confirmation number? I said, no. He said, then they probably didn't do anything about it. He said, give it to me. I'll have it delivered to the other place tomorrow. Well, anyway, the point is, I came back early from a vacation. I waited around here all day. Literally, they wasted time out of my precious life. Like, it doesn't matter. And what has this world... And then the second one was the um, post office, who tried to make a delivery at 9.30 at night and said, uh, what was it? Oh, uh, the business was closed. This isn't a business. You know, I, what is this world coming to that we can't, when we're just doing a simple thing, like taking a package and attempting to deliver it to live up to what you're saying? Yes, Jack. Uh, 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 okay. That other guy. That yeah. other guy, Mike. Yeah, it's called laziness. That's what it is. Oh. I have a suggestion. What? Uh, get uh, use one of those uh, uh, post office etc. places. Oh yeah, yeah. I want to pay for what I want to pay for those to get a sir to get get a place where they can go and supply a service. They should be supplying me, especially when yeah, I'm here. Is it worth the aggravation? To, to go through all of that. I'm not going to get myself... A, a, just a, a, pay 15 bucks a month and, and it's done. Oh, yeah, another 15 bucks a month to somebody else to solve a problem that I shouldn't have to solve because it's not mine. To begin, with, it, to begin with, I wrote GoPro back. I said it's your problem because it's your problem by proxy. Yes, Jack. Well, part of the problem is this. Uh, Republicans have for years been trying to break the back of the U.S. Postal Service. Yeah. <clears throat> Oh, you yeah. know, uh, we have fewer postal employees working now than we had 20 years ago. It's because they're killing each other. No, they really should be killing carpet salespeople, but that's another story. <laughs> yeah, so, uh, yeah, there's been a term for it. It's called going postal. Well, well, a friend of mine just got back from Europe, and they call it going Texas, which really scares me. But well, uh, got nothing called going carpet. <laughs> well, don't worry. We're working on it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, but also uh, uh, they have limited the kinds of things that the postal service can get involved in delivering now. Uh, 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 another thing that uh, that frankly just drives me crazy is uh, I was in 
a store, an actual brick and mortar store. Yeah, but I don't know what you're, why you're going after the post office because basically this story is about FedEx and about well, the, about a well, service that it, they provide, which they should provide as accurately and as effortlessly for the customer as possible. The fault is Amazon. You know, when you, you have How's all the of these fault packages, Amazon? I'm not too talking much about. I'm not talking about Amazon. And Amazon is the one who uses the fucking post office. And I've made a fortune off of Amazon this year because every time I complain that the post office did another thing to fuck up because I wanted to be on the record, they give me another five dollar credit. The this the problem is the expectations <laughs> that people have got from Amazon deliveries. It's overloading the post office. Now people are using FedEx and they're overloaded. They, you can only you know do so much. I, 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 then system. don't then don't Amazon then, is then, then close then close <laughs> down your fucking the company. Apparatus to Clo third party couriers, yes. but they're getting paid like eight bucks, ten bucks an hour, nothing to yeah. you know grow about. Close down your fucking company if you can't do the delivery <laughs> business. If you can't do the business properly, then close it the fuck down and don't and, and quit trying to excuse their bad behavior on oh uh, there's too much there's it. too much I'm volume. They've overpromised. They've overpromised, which has uh, and it's gotten to the point where they can't perform. They can't perform, but the additional load of Amazon deliveries is what's gumming up the system. Uh, let, me, let me let me ask a few people here who haven't been involved uh, in in. Uh, is that good but, UPS but, also? Yes, a UPS and iPhone. Oh, I find of all the services, the one I have the least trouble with is is uh, UPS. Uh, but uh, uh, yeah, uh, they, they're a bunch of brown Mark, shirts. Mark, do you, do you, if you had any problems at all, or did, did, had to deal a lot with FedEx or any of these? I'll tell you one thing, Alex. When I, you know, in the night, late night, mid to late nineties, when I lived in Manhattan. The mail service was so good. At times, I had three postal deliveries a day. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's unbelievable. I could not believe how good that was. Well, um, down here, I think they're actually hiring postal workers. And this is off, considered off-season. All the time. It's just, it's just amazing that... Well, he, um, he, uh, uh, Albert... One of the things he did is he took a job at the post office, uh, and he 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 first worked uh, uh, you just uh, unloading planes out of JFK. He said he enjoyed that job because the people around him were kind of cool and they had a good rapport with each other and so on. He said, but then he went to work for a post office. He said it was the worst environment he's ever worked in in his <laughs> life. He really? said, "No wonder and these people go." There's a the guy that worked in radio. And there's for a, a guy who worked. So in you radio. know <laughs> how bad. Yeah, wow. it's a, he's like a concentration camp victim with Trump. You know, he knows he's seen it before. Sure. It's uh, only a matter of time. I but the fact it. was, he said that 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 it was some of the it was one of the worst environments he ever had to work in. Yet, I one of the most brilliant people I ever knew. Yeah was a long-time postal employee because for him it was easy. But, you know, you're saying he was a long-time postal employee. You're talking about the post office then. No, I'm talking now. Oh, He's still oh really? Working. He could have retired, but he still goes, you know, and it's like, why are you still going? You could have retired. This is the thing. He could have retired 10 years ago. Did he oh, deliver the mail, Mark, or did he uh, He worked in, in the he, what, what? He, at the at the office at the post office itself, I don't think he was a courier. Oh, okay. Maybe uh, he had good coworkers, and it was a good work environment, which I this, obviously is rare. But well, I mean, this, let's no, face it. Know. Let's face it. Albert obviously did this in New York, and the attitude oh. in New York is not the best attitude in the world. Although well, I, have a, I have a very nice postman, that, though. That, I don't. That was interesting. There's one bit of trivia here, and for the longest time. The post office could actually boast that it was one of the, I think, the only branch of the government that would turn a profit. Really? Yes. 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 I yeah, thought yeah, they were yeah. losing money. No. The post office. Oh, no. Well, that, they're losing. Time. At they're one lo time. They're losing <laughs> money now because yep. Congress jacked with the Postal Union's uh, pension plan. That started with Reagan, didn't it? When they started. They're yes. losing money because of the competition of email. And uh, and other services. Uh, well, the, not, not really. The, the problem is 
unlike every other pension plan in this country, they had to have some unbelievably long-term uh, payout guarantee of services, and and they had to, you know, uh, collect their money, and 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 trust fund it, like no other union in the country. Because it's semi-privatized now. Okay. Uh, you know, even though it's it's uh, it's got something to do with the government, and, the post office and, and, is no longer. And, and, uh, and if they weren't mandated to deliver all that stupid ass third class mail that nobody wants anyway. I throw it out. But they would not. That's where they make that their bread and butter, mail. isn't it? That's no. To, oh, no, where they make right. their bread and butter is on first class delivery. Well, that third class stuff, uh, those vendors pay to have that delivered. I hate it as much as anyone else. But uh, Fed, FedEx isn't willing to do it, or or, or that German well, company here, that we he, had, he, he, DHL. Or, but here, here's it, the, here's the here's things. the wonderful thing about it, and uh, Renee online brought it up, uh, is that you know there's a, a, a lot of moves afoot to do away with the post office and to privatize the post office. And you know what happens when you pri privatize the post office? You get FedEx. You it's get the kind of problems time. I've been facing. The, the lack of giving any attention to something where there's no, absolutely no uh, 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 accountability. So, I mean, come on, privatize it? It's, uh, you know, it's privatized okay. to a great extent already. I mean, Amazon does, it, but, you, you know, with, with companies who use FedEx and so on. But, I mean, what I went through for the last two days with just a constant lying, is a, it, it amazes me. And I know the reason why this guy didn't deliver the, the, the coffee I was supposed to get at 9.30 last night and said the business was closed was because he didn't even try to deliver it. It was 9.30 and he wanted to go home. You're right. He was, yeah, he was, well, at least he went by and left you a note. No, he didn't leave me a note. There yeah, was, yeah. The post office has never left me a note. Well, how did you find out that he? Uh, because I go, uh, I go online, and I have an online uh, uh, tracking uh, tracking that uh, lets me know all these various things. By the way, we now have ten people plus me. That's eleven. See, we can do that now. And here's Amy. I, I just wanted to make a comment about privatizing the post office. Oh, yeah. What people don't realize. Is think about how much it costs you to send something FedEx or UPS. Imagine if you're just trying to send in you know, your bill to you know to pay your bill, your light bill or something. Mm -hmm. um, instead of paying whatever thirty three or forty five or whatever it is now, fifty five cents. No, it'd it's be for, like uh, ten it's bucks. Cents. It's forty three cents. How many 40, people still use the post office to pay their bills? A lot of people. I, a lot of people. Do. I, well, you think everybody's like you? That's the funny thing sense. about you. Well, everybody the, comes from the same class as you. Everybody's got the money you have. Everybody is like you. There, are a lot of people, especially older people. There's still, still many rural communities too that lack high speed internet access. That's right. And and here's the here's the other thing. Um, when my son was stationed overseas, the only way for me to send him a package was through the postal service. I couldn't send it UPS or FedEx. Phil, you know, we've got three people on the panel that I know for sure are old enough to remember when the post office delivered twice a day. Yes. <laughs> Now, I don't remember him delivering twice a day, but I yes, live I on do. a rural route. My address was RD3, Rural Route 3, and the whole community, that's what it was. We didn't have to put our street on there. Uh, just the name and RD3. Did you crank the phone three times to no. get the... Uh, <laughs> yeah, but I'll be there, yo. Mabel, Mabel, get it. <laughs> party lines. Party yeah. lines. You just opened the window. And the our, our second line was a party line. You had two lines? Yeah. Yes, Jeff. Was, uh, oh, Jeff. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Jeff, Jeff has his hand up. Jeff, we haven't heard from Jeff much tonight. Yeah, yes, Jeff. I just had a substantial uh, package delivered today. Uh, we expected it to be here today, and it came today from UPS, and, and everything was fine. And it was a pretty substantial package. 
Uh, Maybe. Well, you know, as much as you guys have problems, I don't do too bad. We've I been pretty joined, good with these people. Wait a minute. We've been joined I think by, a lot of it has to do with local uh, mm -hmm. management. We've been joined by Kevin. Oh, I just, uh, I've expanded this a little bit so that we could try and see Kevin. Let's see here. I'm going to have to make an adjustment over here. So, uh, uh, in order to get him in the picture, oh uh, boy, this, this is getting very okay. difficult. This, this could be scientific. Uh, no, it's like... <laughs> what? Don't this worry about it. Wait a minute. I... Hold on a second. I was, the other thing I was going to say is that, you know, I've sent packages um, USPS, so U.S. Postal Service, and I've sent them UPS, and I've sent them FedEx. And you know what the least expensive and still really reliable way is? Post office. Yeah. Kevin, Kevin, turn on your camera, will you? Yeah, I'm trying. If not, don't worry about it. Oh, okay. Uh, because I, I've just added you to the group. There you go, folks. I had to widen the picture in order to do it. Because every time we get more than 10 other people, uh, the uh, I, it uh, takes up more room. <laughs> well, you're going to lose me as I get ready to do the intersection. Mm -hmm. We can pick this conversation up on the other side of the top of the hour. Okay, let's do that. Let me... Uh... Uh, I'm going to yeah. head out, too. And just wanted to comment on, on the post office that... You just I think want it's to great. Comment. We still have it. Okay. Still good Thank deal. you, Jack. Jack. I can remember as a kid. Thank you, Amy. And we'll get rid of them. Let me see here. Uh, <laughs> remove from group. And uh, there we go, Amy. Manual Jeez, remove good. from group. There we go. Come on, Amy. Go away. Here we go. Remove from group. There we go. And 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 guess who we have in the picture? We have. Uh, uh, there we go. We have, uh, we have, if you want to, if you can't turn on your camera. Uh, 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 it look, oh, wait, here we go. It's down yeah. here somewhere. Uh, yeah. It got buried. Yeah, it got buried. Okay. Well, anyway, we only got about <laughs> I've three. I've got the spinning beach ball of death going on, so I'm just not going to worry <laughs> about it. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's some problem with your computer. Yeah, that or the hourglass. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but, uh, you know, we, we, we did get 11 people plus me, so. Uh, oh, ten cool. pe 11 people plus me. Yeah, that's, that's 12 in my book. Yeah, it's 12 in your book, I guess. Yeah. Yeah, uh, they were 12. Just, with Amy and but Jack anyway, and all I'm seven. saying, all I'm saying is, you know, there was a time when FedEx, you know, it was gold. UPS was more than gold. UPS is still kind of okay. But how do you run a company with that kind of inefficiency? And, and you know, this isn't the first time it's happened to me. This has happened continually. UPS, yeah, yeah. You know. Yeah, I heard cab drivers don't even want to go to Harlem. No, they the cab drivers go to Harlem now. They're dying to pick up fares in Harlem. Versus Amazon, which is a little more efficient. I take the green cars, which are owned by people who who used to own the town cars that used to pick people up, because at least they still, in the in the old days, picked up black people. So you know, uh, I I like the green cars over the uh, the yellow cabs. Uh, Yellow cab charge too much anyway. No, no, it's the same for the green cab. It's all metered. It's metered. You know, the thing you don't want to do, with, and we can get into this some other night, is Uber. I mean, those guys just, you know, will take you for, they'll take you for a ride. Yeah, priority, uh, priority prices, surge, uh, surge pricing. Uh, yeah, know? yeah. Uh, you know what the cab driver used to do is they would deflate their tires, and that would run up the bill. Really? Yeah. Oh, yeah. You. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, you can do that. And, and I had a friend, Steve Gruber, who used to count the blocks because every block, you know, 20 blocks in this town, you can count on it, is a mile. So he would count the blocks, and if the meter was turning over too fast, he would let the uh, he would let the cab driver know. Oh, I'm sure he knew. Yeah, I mean, he was <laughs> he was crazed about that. Hey, yeah. thanks to everybody. Rob, thank you. Uh, right. Anthony Magno, mm -hmm. thank you. P Patrick. Always a pleasure. Of course, uh, Brian and Kevin and uh, Mike and Mark. Oh, great to see you again, Mark. Thank you so much. I appreciate the call. And Phil Meyer and, of course, Jeff. Uh, hopefully we'll see you again tomorrow night. Sometime. Your papers, Alex. 
There are my papers. Patience. I have no idea where my papers are. Anyway, <laughs> everybody, ass, wave goodbye. Wave goodbye. There's Good them. Morning. Say Good goodbye morning. to them all. Good there you. they go. Goodbye. Okay, okay. I'll hang up on all of them. And uh, I'll uh, turn my uh, little uh, line off here so the next show can use it. And we're, uh, we're finished for tonight. That's me, Alex Bennett. Stay tuned for uh, Jack and Amy. They're next on the... Uh, on the bill with uh, the intersection and follow it at uh, 1 o'clock in the morning Eastern Daylight Time by Connections. I'm Alex Bennett. I'll see you again tomorrow night, same time, same station in life. In the meantime, if you see her, tell her I love her, okay? <laughs>